What's up guys, Rogue9 here and today I want to talk about a topic that has been on my mind for a while now. Bullet hole strats, where a player shoots a single bullet hole into a soft wall and then gets right up close to it to hold a very specific angle, while being almost impossible to spot for the opponents, have become quite prevalent in the higher ranks of Rainbow Six Siege, and not so long ago you could find a lot of people complaining about the topic on Twitter. First we had drop shotting and quick peeking, and both of these issues were fixed. Then we had lean and crouch spamming, and again, those techniques were eventually removed from the game game. Nowadays, the new strats that players use to give themselves an edge in gunfights are crouch peeking and bullet hole angles, and whether you personally use bullet holes for easy kills or not, I think it's safe to say that this technique has developed into the new cheese strat in Siege, and in this video, I want to talk about why I personally think that this technique should be removed, and how the change should be really easy for the devs to implement. Let's go! Like with all cheese strats, there are people who love to use them and people who hate them, and I make no judgement either way. If a mechanic is in the game, and it works, then it's fair enough for players to take advantage of it, and for players who don't like it, the choice is simple. Either adapt and learn to use the strat as well, or, if it really starts getting on your nerves and you refuse to play in that way, then sadly the only other option is to find a different game to spend your time on for a while. It's never a good thing though when the core mechanics of your game are turning players off, and so let's maybe first discuss what criteria should be used when deciding whether or not to keep a technique like bullet hole angle holding in the game. For me personally, the key questions in deciding whether or not I want a cheesy mechanic to be removed are, does it make sense in the reality that the game is trying to portray, and does this add any significant gameplay value that would make it worth keeping even if it's unrealistic? Rainbow Six Siege is a game about a multinational CTU that has spent the last four and a half years training non-stop in simulated paintball style engagements against each other. I guess you could say that they were occasionally deployed to South America in their Ghost Recon cameos, but other than that, training is what Rainbow Six Siege is all about. And sure, Siege has often been described as sci-fi or anime, but at the end of the day, at its core, the game is still supposed to be emulating real life, and so for me personally, the mechanics should in general make sense IRL unless there is a significantly valid gameplay reason for them to be there. Examples from the past that I've already mentioned are drop shotting, doesn't make sense in real life, and didn't add to the gameplay in a way that was worth keeping, and so it was removed. Lean and crouch spamming would make it literally impossible to shoot your guns accurately in real life, and again, these techniques were determined to be counterproductive to having fun in the game, so goodbye, removed. So the question now is, how do bullet holes in Siege stand up against the two tests of realism and gameplay value? The question around realism is pretty easy to answer, because using an individual bullet hole for a sneaky angle that you can also fight through is just not a thing that would ever work in real life. First of all, if you shoot at a sheet of drywall or wood panelling, it looks something like this. You don't end up with neatly stamped out holes, especially with the drywall, and even though you can get holes that you can sort of see through, it's nowhere near as clean and easy as portrayed in Rainbow Six Siege. Would you be able to peek through these holes and actually fight someone on the other side of the wall? Well, as Paul Harrell would say, you be the judge. And beyond that, even if you manage to create a clean hole in a wall and you want to shoot through it, you're going to run into an entirely different problem. See, the thing is, guns in real life are not two-dimensional, they're these pretty long metal stick thingies, and that kind of gets in the way if you're trying to get right up close to a hole. And since the shooter's sightline, whether through iron sights or optics, is pretty much always over the top of the gun barrel, you end up with another problem. If you arrange your muzzle so that it aligns perfectly with your little sneaky spy hole, then you'll just end up staring at the wall in front of you. If you bring the gun down so that you can at least sort of see through the hole from about half a meter away, then you'll now be shooting straight into the wall below at point blank range. Not a fun thing to do, even with relatively soft walls because you'll be getting showered in wood splinters, plaster dust and all kinds of other debris. 
Whichever way you slice it, small view holes would never work in real life the way they do in video games. In Siege, like with literally any other first person game, the player's view is provided by a single camera that is mounted in the center of the character model's head. For Siege specifically, this is also where your bullets come from. They literally fly out of your invisible third eye of truth at infinite speed without being affected by gravity. This is one of those things that makes no sense whatsoever when you think about it in that way, but from a gameplay perspective, it's the right thing to do for a fast paced competitive shooter. The only issue in Siege being is that this is what enables the bullet hole angle technique. The summary is, out of the two tests to decide whether or not a gameplay mechanic is worth keeping, bullet hole angles definitely fail the realism test. The mechanic is unrealistic and dumb and would never work that way in real life. And so the next question is, do bullet holes add any significant gameplay value? The answer to that is a bit subjective, I guess. Some people might like it, many others probably don't, and so everyone will have their own opinion on whether or not a mechanic like this should stay in the game. What we can say objectively though, is that holding an angle through a tiny, pretty much invisible hole like this gives a huge advantage to the ambushing player. And it's not just a problem that individual holes can be hard to spot. Almost all walls in Siege have two panels to them, and that means that bullet holes are only see-through from a very specific angle. In most situations, the victim will be further away and will not be in the precise angle that will allow them to see through the holes, and that means that the ambushing player has basically created a one-way sightline. For Rainbow Six, I guess you could make the argument that it will be mostly defenders using this technique and attackers are able to drone ahead of themselves, but in some situations it can also be the attackers holding peephole angles and the defenders will almost never have any effective way of dealing with this. In my personal opinion, being able to drone is not enough of an excuse to keep a clearly lopsided mechanic that is not fun to play against at all, and so the second test is also failed. This means that just like drop shotting and all of the other cheese techniques before, bullet hole peaks should be removed from the game and luckily achieving this should be super simple. All we would really need is a system where the actual bullet holes are removed and instead when we shoot soft surfaces, each hit causes simple 2D decals to appear. This far simpler decal system has been in the game since launch for when you shoot solid surfaces and at the start of Operation Phantom Sight it was also enabled for soft surfaces. Ever since that changed, most guns in Siege can only penetrate through one single wall and after that they're stopped by the next soft surface they hit, and initially these later hits were displayed with decals. See examples in the current background footage. Nowadays this system has been changed again and now your bullets will still cause a hole in the second wall, but my argument remains valid. 2D decals are definitely possible in Siege from a technical perspective. So really? All we need is for these decals to appear on all soft surfaces even when the bullets still pass through. Does that mean that soft breaching with guns would go away completely? No, of course not, because the system with larger breach holds, named impulses by the R6 devs, could still be kept. Individual bullet holes will no longer be see-through, but as soon as you shoot a wall the required number of times, usually 6 or 10 for the first layer and another 3 or 5 for the second layer depending on the surface and gun you're using, that larger breach can still appear. You can still hold longer angles through soft walls, but now you just have to create a proper breach rather than being able to peek through a tiny peephole. It's more realistic, it gives the opponent enough of a fighting chance to make the technique far less cheesy and far less frustrating, and all of the systems needed to be able to realize this improved mechanic are already in the game. Would this solve all of the issues in Siege? No, of course not. A single impulse or punch hole can still be somewhat hard to spot, and people could still create two dozen punch holes in a wall and hide behind just one of them. There would still be some ways of creating very effective ambush setups, but I I do think that removing these single bullet holes would be a huge first step in the right direction. To me, it's a no-brainer, especially with all of the complaining from the pro players and other prominent R6 community members we've seen around this topic. Individual bullet holes are unrealistic, 
not fun to play against and the decal system is already in the game, so technically there is no reason we shouldn't get a fix within the next season or two if not sooner. So if it makes sense and it's easy to fix, what would stop the devs from getting this change prepared and into the game as soon as possible? Nothing as far as I can see. I mean, maybe taking the bullet holes out altogether is not as simple as it seems. I don't know, I'm not a programmer. But given how vocal a large part of the community was not so long ago, I do think it's worth considering this fix soon. But what do you think? Would you like to see the bullet holes removed or would you prefer to keep them? Vote in the poll on screen now and with that, many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.